Hello everyone. As a software engineer who has worked in the Silicon Valley for over a decade, I have a lot of experience building products. And at the same time, I also have experience working with data scientists and data engineers because everything that I was building, the information would feed into the data science algorithms and help us make the products better. So in this video, I'm going to compare and contrast the two roles, that of a software engineer and of a data engineer also data scientists. I will also explain how these roles work and what is the impact that these engineers can make to the company. By the end of this video, you will have a clear understanding of the day-to-day -day roles, how much each position pays, and if it is possible for a software engineer to become a data engineer slash data scientist and reverse the roles. So let's get right into it. What does a software engineer do? I've been one, so I can explain that in utmost detail, but here's the basics. We build features and products for companies. Sometimes software engineering can be done for client-facing products. For example, when I was working at Netflix, I was working on their iOS app and I would build features directly on the homepage of Netflix. If you've seen that like really big screen that comes up, I'll show here on the, on the side, that was called the billboard and I worked actively on that. Now, I also, wrote a bunch of logs that would feed into the data sciences system so data engineers could look at them and make sense of what these features were doing out in the public. And as software engineers, we also had control over certain data engineering tools like for example Tableau and we were able to create our own custom reports to show to the product managers or our team leads. Sometimes software engineers will build internal tools. For example, if someone wants to do a task over and over, software engineers could be building internal tools like report generations or anything that needs to be done internally within the company to make things easy. For example, some of the content team would upload artwork on portals and Netflix and we were able to look at that artwork and see if it fits properly on the UI. So that system, those internal tools were built by software engineers who were working in company facing teams. This was a very simplistic explanation of what software engineers do. I was talking from the angle of a mobile slash web developer. Those were the roles that I primarily played in my career. And then of course there are backend engineers who work mostly with the data. They may or may not write APIs. It depends on the, on the team. Sometimes front-end engineers write their own APIs. Most of the times backend engineers will create the entire API that front-end engineers can use and then integrate the two systems together. So this is mostly what software engineers do. Let's get back to data science and data engineering. If you have no idea what data scientists slash engineers do, let's take an example of going to the supermarket. If you've ever found milk and bread placed close to each other, a data engineer or scientist may have something to do with it. Let me explain how. When supermarkets were first created, there wasn't a lot of data backed product placement happening. Now, once we started mining this data, giant amounts of data. So for example, if it's a big supermarket chain, they are getting hundreds of thousands of customers every day. The receipts of those customers are parsed and put into a data mining system. Over there, one of the problems that the data engineers could be solving for the company is figuring out what items are frequently bought with other items. So milk and bread is one of those examples. Once they saw that the frequency of milk and bread is pretty high when they are bought together in say 75% of the receipts, I'm just making that number up, but that is statistically significant. Now the company gets this report and has the ground forces place these items close to each other. More and more people see the milk, they buy the bread, they see the bread, they buy the milk, and they increase the average order value of this customer shopping during this trip and hence improving profits for the company. So this was a very basic example of how data science can solve big data problems. Now, here's where we can start talking about data science versus software engineering. Your first question to me was, how much do each of these careers pay? And that's a very interesting question because it really depends on which company you are going to. Most of the fan companies, the big Amazon, Google, Facebook, Netflixes of the world, 
will pay software engineers and data engineers about the same salary. Here's a screenshot from levels.fyi. If you're ever curious about salaries, this is a really good resource to go to and look at verified salary data. From Glassdoor, I found that some of the smaller companies will pay data engineers less than software engineers. And the reason for that is in a smaller company that is not data driven yet, because just think about it, this small company doesn't even have enough data to mine from. So most of the decisions are being made at the product level or the CEO level. And software engineers have a much higher impact in those companies than data engineers. So naturally the software engineers are getting paid a little bit more, sometimes double the amount. But when it comes to giant companies like Google, Facebook, Netflix, these companies have tons and tons of data to play with. They are at a stage where they are already making a lot of money. They have millions, if not billions of customers. And now their biggest and best features cannot come from just human minds. We have to now look at the patterns and how the users are using these websites. So for example, when you're scrolling through Facebook and you stop at a certain post, whether it's an advertisement or whether it's a post from your friend, you will notice the more you interact with these posts, the more Facebook will start showing you similar posts. And I suspect something in the data pipeline is creating those reports for the internal systems and product managers and leaders are going like, oh, this is pretty cool. This type of person, a female, 25 years of age, is interacting a lot with the makeup ads. And the data that went inside this system was just user information, how long did they stop on a certain thing for and what they did with it. Did they click, did they comment, did they like? And now all of this information gets fed into a pipeline, a data pipeline and someone on the other end, most likely a data scientist or a data engineer is looking at this pipeline and going, okay, I'll make some sense out of how long did they spend on this and now how many ads should we surface to this person. So when the company gets bigger, you get a lot more data to work with. Now, the next question I was asked about was, how do promotions work? Do software engineers have a better career trajectory or data scientists? Well, the answer is it depends. It depends on what you're really interested in. And if you are excelling in that field, you're going to be able to make more impact. So this, this becomes very personalized. If you love building features and you love building software, you will do better as a software engineer and hence you'll get promoted faster and easier. If solving these big data problems is your passion and you're finding creative ways to make more money for the company and hence you're having a bigger impact you will be promoted faster so i wouldn't look at promotions just from being a software engineer versus a data engineer perspective but just how interested you are and how much more committed you are to the craft of this field and how much money you're really making to the business. Think about this company you're working for as a business. They are going to promote those and reward those who are going to make the business more money. So always think about your career as a person who's in a job from the company's perspective. So let's get a little bit into the nitty gritties of what data engineers and scientists are really doing. The One of the most frustrating job about managing data is really cleaning it and formatting it. So sometimes data engineers end up spending a lot of time in the extraction of data. And because it's coming from so many sources, the schema of the data is not very easy to use. It needs to be purged. There are redundancies, they need to be removed. So a lot of time of data engineers is spent on cleaning the data and making it actually usable. So queries can be made and the data can be mapped and reduced into something useful. Data engineers are expected to know the basics of programming because they'll be using a lot of Python or the language R to manage this data. Again, cleaning, processing, map, reduce. I will link down some resources below so you can play around with getting big chunks of data and learning how to put it into a pipeline, cleaning it and making sense of it. Some of these problems are already solved and as a student, you can take this data set and solve this problem again just to understand how the whole process is done. So if you become a software engineer and are still interested in data science, data engineering, it is pretty straightforward process 
to convert from a software engineer to a data engineer. But to become a data scientist, it needs much more training. A data scientists use advanced mathematics, they understand statistics very well, and they are able to create prediction models. Concepts like mean, variance, median, statistical significance are bread and butter of data scientists and they are able to make real good sense out of if this data is useful or not. And again, more big companies will be using the services of data scientists, smaller companies will not be using as much. They might outsource this work if they even start to get good amount of data to some third party companies that provide services to look into these data and provide insights. In software engineering, definitely we have these different types of software engineers like full stack back and front end. The answer for whether a full stack engineer gets promoted faster than back end engineer or a front end engineer is the same. What do you think you can make the most impact in? What do you think you can benefit the company the most in? Because you're interested in it, because you love learning about it. I'll share with you that I started as a front end engineer and really the reason was because that's the first job I got. Like when I was graduating from my master's degree from university, all I cared about was getting a job. I got a job at a front end team, great, I was happy. I would have wanted a back end job, but I did just as well in the front end because it was just so exciting getting your new job you have so much energy to learn and I did well in it but eventually I really really felt the urge to move into mobile development because I found that more exciting and more fun to play with so I did lots of boot camps worked 60 to 100 hours a week at times for months at a time and got really really good at mobile development and landed my job as an iOS developer in Fox and then eventually at Netflix. So you do have to follow your interest. You do have to follow the field that you think you'll have the most fun with. And then you just choose from there. It's fine to keep switching and experimenting. So you, so say for example, you start as a front end developer for two years, get comfortable with your back end developer coworkers and start learning by taking small projects, just fix a couple of bugs in your backend system. See if you're liking the structure of the code base and you enjoy solving problems there. You can switch roles from front end to back end and then figure out which one you like more and take it from there for the rest of your career. So there will never be a good answer to, hey, I, I want, which one should I become? You have to try and figure that out for yourself. The more experience you get in different systems, the more well-rounded you'll be as an engineer. So I always, highly recommend diversity of skill instead of just drilling a really deep hole in one place. You won't get too much out of it. Once you get comfortable, start looking for other things to learn. That's it for today's video. And if you liked this video about which engineer to become, I also have a video about how to become an engineer and get a degree in the lowest cost possible. So watch it right here. It will be linked in the description and I hope you have a great day.